hey GED students, um, I had a student Heba who was just uh, wondering if I had a wrong answer on the answer sheet for this particular problem. Now this problem is from the volume and surface area lesson on the crash course, it's the advanced level practice. And uh, I totally understand why Heba might think I have a wrong answer because there is so many places you could go wrong on this problem. So let's go ahead and do it together because how like the GED to try to trick us as many times as this sucker does. Uh, let's read it first. Janine bought four raised beds in which to plant a garden. Alrighty, a raised bed. The beds are each five feet long and two feet wide and then she's gonna fill them with soil 18 inches deep. Notice those three dimensions, five feet long, two feet wide, 18 inches deep. Mm, we're looking at a 3D shape. And what shape are we looking at? Well, I'm thinking it's a box here since we're doing raised garden beds and we didn't get any other information about these beds. I'm just gonna assume we're basically looking at a box shape. So let me kind of sketch this out so I can picture what's going on. And it said it was five feet long, uh, two feet wide, and we're gonna do 18 inches deep. All right, but notice, we didn't just do this one time. Did you notice this word? A lot of students would miss this word because it's spelled out. Janine bought four raised beds. Hmm. So she has this picture four times. That exact same thing is going on four times. All right, now Janine plans to fill them with soil 18 inches deep. And then the question here says, how many cubic feet of soil does she need? All right, obviously I'm looking at a 3D shape here. I'm measuring this 3D shape somehow. So I'm gonna hit up the GED formula sheet for the section with the 3D shapes. Let's take a look at that. So this is the portion of the GED formula sheet that has to do with three-dimensional shapes. It's the third section down and it's titled surface area and volume. Those are the two ways that we measure 3D shapes. Now you've got to, it's really important for these word problems here that you understand the difference between surface area and volume. Because like this problem, it didn't tell you which one you're looking for. So you have to know what these words mean. So the surface area is like the covering over a 3D shape. Think about if you were taking this uh, shape over here, this box, and like covering it in wrapping paper, okay? So even though the box itself is 3D, the covering is a two-dimensional shape. It's like covering it in squares. Like think of the squares on the back of wrapping paper. Okay, so it's a square measurement um, and it covers a 3D shape. Now volume, on the other hand, volume is filling a 3D shape, like filling up your water bottle with water. Uh, because you're gonna actually fill that entire 3D shape, it is a 3D measurement. The measurement itself also has to be 3D and it's measured in cubic units, three-dimensional units, okay? So it's like, which one are we looking at here? Do Am I finding the surface area of the shape or the volume? Well, let's go back and look at our word problem for some clues. Uh, let's see, it says the beds are each five foot long, two feet wide. Okay, it's our three-dimensional shape. Oh, here we go. Janine plans to fill them with soil. She's not going to pat the soil around the outside of the box. She's actually going to fill the box with soil. And then look again, it says how many cubic feet of soil. That's a three-dimensional measurement, a cubic measurement. Ah, these are really big clues that I'm looking at volume. Okay, now volume of what? There's no box in this list of 3D shapes here. So what is this box called? Well, the, a box like that is known as a rectangular prism. So if we want the volume of a rectangular prism, we're gonna do the V formula in this line. So volume is equal to L W H. And what we mean by that, see how those that L, that W, and that H are shoved together? We're multiplying the three dimensions. So basically to find the volume of a rectangular solid, you just multiply the length, the width, and the height. Sounds super easy, right? Yay, we did all the interpreting super easy. Watch out, I've got two more tricks that we are gonna need to avoid. So let's start out by writing down that formula. We said V is equal to length times width times height. Now, a lot of students so excited would just go ahead and plug in the numbers that they know. You know, uh, let's see, the length was five feet long and the width is two feet wide and the height is 18 inches deep. 
and they'd try to do this. And if you did this, you'd be wrong, guys. That would absolutely give you a wrong answer. And the reason why is because you cannot mix units. Take a look. This is feet. This is inches. This is feet. What the heck? We're supposed to be finding how many cubic feet of soil does she need? If I want cubic feet, guess what I need? Three measurements in feet. <laughs> cubic feet literally means feet in three directions. Okay, so I have a problem with that 18 inches. Now, there are 12 inches in a foot. If you don't know that, make sure that gets into your notes. 12 inches in one foot. So I have 18 inches, I obviously have more than a foot, but how many more? Well, a great, quick, easy way to do that is 18 out of 12, 18 divided by 12. I've got 18 inches out of the full 12 in a foot, and I can convert this into feet. So 18 divided by 12, and I find out that's about, or that's exactly 1.5 feet or one and a half feet. And so that is the number that I need to use. So let's try to plug into our formula this time. So volume is equal to five feet, that's feet, times two feet, that's also feet, times 1.5, 18 inches is the same as 1.5 feet. Now that all my measurements are in feet, now my answer will be in cubic feet. Let's go ahead and do that math. So five times two times 1.5, gives me 15. So I find out that the volume of this box is 15 cubic feet. Now so many students would be so excited right now, they'd say, hey, I'm done, I did it. Not only did I figure out if this was volume or surface area and not get tricked by the inches, you know, I'm amazing, I'm great at this, but watch out. Don't forget that you had bought four raised beds. Janine's filling four of these beds. What did you just find? The volume to fill one of these beds. Guess what's going to happen? This 15 cubic feet is going to happen four times. So let's do that. Let's take that 15 cubic feet and let's fill four beds. We're going to do that four times. So if I times that by four, then whew, no wonder poor uh, my poor student was confused. How many steps was that? We need 60 cubic feet to fill all four beds. All right, yeah, clearly guys, this is a challenging problem. This is no joke. There's a reason why it was on the advanced level practice of volume and surface area. Even if you never get through to problems quite this complex, you still can pass your GED, okay? So don't let yourself panic, but this is what I wanna say. The trickiest problems on the GED are of this style. They hide a lot of information in the word problem. There's a ton of interpretation that needs to go on. You really gotta understand what you're reading. I mean, look at how much I had to dissect this problem in order not to miss a step. So if you wanna be able to tackle these style of problems without uh, you know, the teacher sitting right there, I won't be next to you in the test. You must practice, you must practice being a close reader. You must practice really interpreting these things. So go head over to the volume and surface area lesson. I put the link here in the video description. Go check that out, practice this. Again, you don't have to practice at this level. Feel free to do beginning or experience level practice, but if you're ready for some real challenge, try this advanced level practice and you get your reasoning skills up to where they really need to be to excel on the GED. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.